pictures of the Great Pacific Dryer. Every year, over 12 million tons of plastics enter our oceans. It takes, on average, 500 to 1,000 years for plastic waste to biodegrade, and I'm talking about thermoplastics. So that means, with the exception of the small amount of plastics that we've incinerated to date, virtually every piece of plastic that we've ever created still exists in some shape or form. Plastic chemicals, on the other hand, like BPA, which has thankfully been banned, acts as estrogen mimics in all mammals' bodies. And exposure to these chemicals, such as BPA, are highly correlated with diseases such as prostate and breast cancer. So it's accurate to say that plastic pollution is now a global crisis that doesn't just threaten the lives of millions and millions of wildlife, but also is threatening the safety of literally everyone in this room and everyone on this planet. Now, we care about this problem beyond just looking at other kinds of solutions, but we've always cared about this problem, which is why we have plastic recycling. Though despite our efforts, over 90% of post-consumer plastics are not being recycled. This is because plastic recycling is really expensive. So it's fair to say that the current ways we have for treating plastic waste are not working. And to make this problem kind of worse, I mean, what we have right now are Parlay is taking different kinds of plastics, especially PET, and upcycling that into textiles. But plastics are very complicated. Um, and there are many, many types. And you've seen recycling barcodes. There are many numbers. So for certain kinds of plastics, like polystyrene, um, which only it makes up about 8% of all plastics produced, is actually making up over 30% of all marine pollution. And this is not just plastic pollution. This shows you that. If we want to take this problem on, and we have to do this one plastic type at a time, polystyrene is a good, is a good plastic to start with because it's disproportionately causing big problems. And this is why I'm here today. My name is Miranda, and I'm the CEO of Bioselection. My company can upcycle plastic pollution into higher value materials. So my team is engineering bacteria that can basically break down, eat plastics, polystyrene, 80 times faster than naturally occurring bacteria. And when you can break down plastics faster, this means that in a scale-up process, when you're growing these bacteria for this purpose, you can save a lot more money on costs. Now, this is really all targeted at the fact that it would be wonderful for us to be able to use technologies that, you know, Cyril just talked about in upcycling different types of, you know, plastics into new materials. But there are a lot of plastics out there that is just plain pollution at this point, and we don't have technologies yet to turn that into useful materials. So we need a technology that can actually break down the pollution. And when my, when my team started looking at different ways to actually build a sustainable business, because we believe that businesses, in the end, become scalable impact. Um, we, we looked at how can we build a business model around in basically a bug that can eat plastics really fast. Because the oceans, in the end, are not going to, the dolphins are not going to be paying for this technology, even though this is benefiting them the most. And humans, uh, at least right now, it doesn't seem like a lot of people, the general public, is even aware of the problem, and that it's, it's very challenging to build a social impact business. So we looked at our bacterium that has naturally evolved to break down plastics, and we know that through genetic engineering, they could become economically scalable as well as very more efficient and optimized at breaking down plastics. And the first hunch we had was to say, what kind of products can we make from it? And the first product we identified was, you know, the, after eat, breaking down the plastics, the bacteria actually produce very good proteins that can be used to feed fish, farm fish. So all of last summer, we spent some time in the lab, and we engineered some you know, bacteria that were breaking down plastics, and we formulated fish feed out of that and did feed trials, and actually showed that our protein was able to lower salmon mortality rates by 73% over the course of one month. Now, with this really good result, we actually went to different trade shows in both Norway and China and tried to sell this product to different fish feed manufacturers, and we got seven letters and tens from interested manufacturers. But coming back, we looked at our economic model and realized that although the science was ready for this sort of move, 
the, the, the economics were not ready because the, kinds of, the kind of product we were competing with was fish meal and that was marketed at $1.40 per kilogram and right now you can't scale up bacteria in bioreactors at that price. So coming back to the drawing board, we thought about what else can this bacteria make and eventually obviously it would be really wonderful to be able to save wild feeder fish but we had to think coming back because we're, we're dealing with brand new technologies that nobody has ever thought of and we need to figure out brand new business models to make them happen. And we came across this material here called a biosurfactant. So right now the process we are developing is that we can take waste plastics and feed it to our proprietary bacteria and as the bacteria eats the plastics as their carbon source, basically like how we eat glucose, it's able to produce a detergent-like compound called rhamnolipid. So rhamnolipids are an extremely high value compound. Um, it's right now marketed at wholesale price, $700 uh, per kilogram. And it's used in all sorts of industries such as for textile manufacturing, foods, cosmetics, and medical products. And Based on our you know, early economic modeling, we predict that at scale by year five, um, just by doing this business, basically this, chemical, this biochemical reaction, we can generate $330,000 every week just by through, that's through one cycle of a bioreactor. Um, so, I mean, these numbers might be pretty off still um, since you know, we are only about one year old and we're looking at other ways to model this. But I just want to show you that there are ways for us to build very valuable businesses around these technologies, which will ultimately solve these problems we have. So a little bit more about this biosurfactant. Um, currently, biosurfactants are, are a class of detergents, and they replace chemical surfactants, which is what's mostly commonly used in textile manufacturing. Um, and Biosurfactants are actually about 1,000 times more effective. So you need to use one 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 thousandth the volume to do the same amount of work. Um, and you know we're we're tapping into this because we believe that producing this compound would be able to disrupt the entire textiles industry. So my team is actually has been me and my co-founder for uh, the past five years now. We started when we were teenagers in high school and we worked on plastic degrading bacteria research um, for, as a science fair project. And you know, out of fate probably, you know, we ended up presenting this idea at TED in 2013 and we founded BioSelection a year ago to continue working on this. We've grown our team um, to a team of scientists and engineers at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm currently a senior. Um, at UPenn studying molecular bio biology and engineering entrepreneurship. And, uh, you know, this is a team of scientists and engineers. We're all pretty young. Um, and we, we have been building a prototype in the lab. Um, and we'll be continue working on this, this company um, full time after graduation, which for me is about three weeks from now. We're, we're also backed by, uh, you know, m mentors in Wharton and world-class advisors. So there are a lot of people in traditional, a pretty traditional institution like Penn who are willing to support this sort of project. We've raised $56,000 in just grant funding from UPenn alone and over $300,000 in, in equity investments. Um, so that just shows you the kind of interest level out there because this is so unique. This is the first technology in the world that can biochemically break down plastic pollution. So this isn't just a set of pretty cartoons. Um, this video here shows you how it works. So this is ocean plastics that Cyril actually has been mailing us. Um, we take that and we dissolve it in solvents, which we're trying to do different mixtures of. On the, on the plate I was holding, there were bacteria that we've been genetically engineering. Uh, those were the little blue and indigo colonies that you've seen. And that bacteria is able to eat the plastics and grow in these bioreactors. So earlier what Suzanne was saying about fermenters, this is, you can see it as that. A uh, fermenter doesn't require oxygen. This process requires oxygen, same type of machine. This is a five liter bioreactor, but it can be scaled up to 150,000 times, which is what I was talking about earlier for a one week turnaround. Um, and what this really means is, you know, <laughs> we can take these bacteria and scale it up so much that it's able to clean up all the plastics and produce very valuable materials. And now I understand that a lot of the times we don't always have the ideal conditions 
to be able to clean up the plastics, collect it, feed it to the bacteria, produce rhamnolipids, and, and, and have you know, a convenient distribution channels to use that product. Um, so in the case, we, we do have, you know, for example, plastic pollution, a very remote site that is very difficult to get to. How would we clean it up? So the flip side of this technology is that from this proprietary bacteria, we can scale it up in these bioreactors and extract enzymes, which are proteins, that would be able to perform the function of breaking down the plastics without, outside of the cell's body. And taking this enzyme, we can break down, basically either spray it onto you know, the plastic pollution on site, or it's actually able to you know, fully break down the plastics into carbon dioxide and water. Um, and the execution plan for something like this, if you can just kind of imagine with me, because you have to understand that, that the plastic pollution when it's on site is, first of all, very difficult to access and also so contaminated and complicated in mixture that it's not going to be easy for you to collect that plastic and take it back to a centralized city or facility for you to do all of this manufacturing that I was talking about. So that means we need to take the solution on site. Um, and what we've been in inventing and you know, conceptualizing the lab here is a mobile depolymerizer machine that basically houses the solvents I showed you briefly in a kind of um, in a laboratory setting. So, so we would take the plastics on site, in the case what Parlay is doing, will go to the beaches where you, know, you collect the plastics and you have a lot of plastics that you end up using for shoes or clothing and a bunch of plastics that you can't use. So in that case, we feed it into this depolymerizer machine that's parked on site. It could be parked on a beach or really anywhere else. Um, and in that case, the plastics are dissolved so that it increases surface area for, for reactions biochemically. And on the other hand, you know, in these scaled up uh, facilities where you know, we already know one, um, one facility in China that we can outsource in, we'll produce these, grow up the bacteria in 160,000 liter vats. And from the bacteria, we can extract the enzymes needed and combine that into the machine where there's depolymerized plastics. So in that case, the entire, all of that pollution that can't be used will be converted to carbon dioxide and water. Now, from this process, we don't get anything valuable like rhamnolipid, but it is able to completely clean up the mess. Um, so our, our plan moving forward is we've currently verified the bacterium that we've engineered through DNA sequencing, and in the following months, we'll be testing um, our enzymatic reactions um, against polystyrene. Uh, so after testing the biotechnology, we currently have two provisional patents, and we'll be fully patenting this technology by the, the end of this year. Um, and, and we'll be exploring scale-up options so that we can actually launch this technology late in 2017. Um, and moving forward, I, going back to the fact that I strongly believe that the, the biggest impact will be made through sustainable businesses. Um, and you know, this, by year five, is anticipated to grow into a $100 million business, which equates to the removal of 243,000 uh, kilograms of plastics every year, um, and is able to tap into, you know, the 13, so right now, every year, $13 billion is the, is the estimate for how much economic loss uh, we have because of marine pollution. So if you think about that, that's a $13 billion industry opportunity that nobody has a technology to tap into until we exist. So we're technically the only company in that entire industry. And we can start out by cleaning plastic pollution, but there are endless landfills out there that people, like in Manhattan, that people can't wait for us to clean up. So that's what we're looking at. And you know, this 243,000 kilograms of plastic is where we're starting. Uh, this tiny bacteria <laughs> we're engineering has the potential to, do, to expand into way, a great, way greater impact. And that means eventually we want to be able to remove all 12 million tons of plastics that are dumped in the oceans every year. And if best, don't dump it. We can clean it up before it gets to the oceans. Um, that means saving millions of animals and also making the human food chain plastic-free for over 4 billion people. So for out, those of you out there in design, and engineering and thinking about these solutions, we're looking for people who can help us, 
both from a technical standpoint and a financial standpoint, or, or other ways if you have other ways. Um, this depolymerizing machine we're building right now, we need designers to come and help us. We're a team of scientists and engineers. So you can see from my slides, everything is like built like a reaction, except I'm re replacing chemical like Lewis structures, the pictures. Um, so so I, hope, I hope to have more help to be able to explain what, I, what we're thinking, because this is the future for, for what I think is going to solve the problem. And I hope all of you will join us in turning a global crisis into an even larger opportunity.